Thank you for learning Siebel with the Siebel Hub. We have a unique, comprehensive and always up-to-date collection of Siebel CRM 2021 training classes. We can deliver live online and on-site training in the highest quality with the most experienced instructors. And we also offer a unique modular Siebel CRM 20 and 21 training. Follow the links in the description or on this slide to learn more and learn Siebel with the Siebel Hub. Hello and welcome to the Siebel CRM 21.12 update highlights. Uh, this is the December release of Siebel 21 and it's the final patch set for Siebel 21, if you will, before next month there will be 22.1. But let's take a look at the most important highlights of this December release. So the release notes tell us uh, there are three new features officially arrived in 21.12. First, uh, attachment support in the inbound REST API. Then product administration REST API for Siebel customer order management. And in the loyalty application, a member next tier assessment detail functionality. Uh, the two last items in this list require an repository upgrade, which is the optional repository upgrade that you can run as part of the update. But if you want to uptake the features, then you have to run the repository upgrade. And skimming through bookshelf reveals that there is now official documentation and some enhancements documented as well for the OAuth authentication option for the inbound REST API. We also find new REST API reference files as part of the bookshelf and the enterprise cache is now finally declared obsolete and removed from bookshelf. Among other things, uh, we find enhancements to the workflow monitoring configuration view the removal of racial labels in certain list of values. Keyboard shortcuts have been added for the web tool script debugger. And well, as a result of the recent log4 shell vulnerability, 21.12 includes the necessary mitigation of the Apache log4j vulnerability, also known as CVE 2021-44228. So now let's get a little bit into more detail about these features. So the first feature listed here is the support for attachments in the inbound REST API. So basically, if your integration object has the attachment child business component or the necessary attachment fields, then it now returns on a GET or query the attachment ID field. For example, for account attachment, this would be the ACCNT attachment ID field. That field will contain a link. And if you follow that link or URL, you will get the attachment as a download practically. Uh, there's also a new URL parameter introduced called inline attachment. And if you set that to true, you will the value of that field will be a base64 encoded string, uh, so the entire attachment in good old base64, as we are probably accustomed to by Siebel EAI. In an insert or up, upsert, uh, that is post or put, translated to HTTP um, scenario, uh, we can insert absurd attachments if we provide the attachment ID field value as the correct base64 encoding of the file. So that is supported for the data API and also for the service API. So if you use business services with the correct integration object fitting, then the service API supports this as well. The integration object must include, of course, the attachment integration component and necessary fields. 
Another addition in the REST API area is the official product administration REST API, which is now documented in the REST guide in Bookshelf. And this is one of the additions that come from the DX4C initiative of Oracle, where Siebel acts as a backend for functionality in the digital experience for communications platform. And the enhancements made are substantial, so you get a new set or updated set of business services and integration objects. And as a result, there is now a consistent REST API for anything that has to do with product administration. So around product classes, product definitions, price lists, part numbers, catalog, literature, you name it. Another welcome enhancement, so to speak, it's not quite a new feature, but it's now officially documented and supported that you use OAuth as the authentication type for the inbound REST API. As we have said, this is not entirely new, but to set it up was practically a black magic part on your side. And now we have new fields in the AI profile for REST inbound authentication, client ID, and client secret. So as a part of the setup, you set up the Siebel application as a confidential client in the OAuth server and you get that ID and secret and you put it in here along with the introspection URL so that the AI, uh, the Siebel resource server in, this, in the diagram can actually validate the access token that the REST client has obtained from the OAuth server. So this is now fully documented and supported. And if we look closer at the content of the Siebel bookshelf, we find below the REST API guide two new zip file downloads. Uh, the first of them is actually a export, you could say, of Swagger or open API files for the business services related to the new product administration REST API. And the second is a sample collection for importing in Postman, so you can start exploring the new REST API really quickly. And uh, as has been announced uh, just one year ago in 20.12, the advanced constraint engine or the Siebel constraint engine uh, was no longer supported as of that date. That date has now been declared as 21.2 in Bookshelf, but Anyway, Advanced Constraint Engine is no longer supported and Advanced Constraint Engine for the product configurator was the only real use case for the Enterprise Cache server and the Enterprise Cache client that you could configure. So as of 21.12 in Bookshelf in the installation guide, there is a note that Siebel Enterprise Cache is no longer supported for the product configurator as of the CRM 21.2 update, as it states in Bookshelf. So quite a while ago it has been desupported, but now the references to the product have been removed from the Siebel Bookshelf guide. And if you're on a higher version of Siebel CRM, uh, such as 21.10 or similar, then you find the workflow monitoring configuration view with two applets originally. So a list applet where you can look up the active workflow process and then use the form applet below to set, for example, the monitoring level. So in 21.12, this view has been reviewed and the form applet was removed and the fields replication level, analytics level and monitoring level have been moved up to the list applet, which now makes it very comfortable to actually query for, let's say, workflow processes with a high monitoring level, which was impossible in prior releases. A very close look at the log files of the 
post install database update utility reveals uh, SQL statements that change the LOVs, at least for uh, UCM uh, related, universal customer master related, where the racial labels uh, master and slave are re replaced by golden and contributor and the old LOVs being deactivated. So this, of course, is a welcome move from Oracle. Um, if you have, however, any uh, custom scripting or whatever that works with the old values, you would have to review those scripts. And those who are already using the web tools based script debugger for eScript or Visual Basic, they will find a welcome addition of keyboard shortcuts now being enabled. And if you open the debug menu, also plain visible for the operations such as start the debugger, um, step over, step into, etc. You might notice that these are not the original F keys that we have in Siebel tools. That is simply because the browser would do something completely different if you press, for example, F5. So the shortcuts, the F key shortcuts have been prefixed with either Alt or Shift or Control or combinations of those additional keys. And last but not least, uh, the infamous Apache Log4J vulnerability CVE 2021-44228, a number that we will remember for a long time, uh, aka Log4Shell, uh, which has disrupted the internet in December, where uh, attackers can execute arbitrary code and it got a 10 out of 10 score in severity. So it's a very, very, in, so it's a very, very bad vulnerability. And Oracle has taken a lot of steps to allow customers to mitigate this very early on on Oracle support. And the article for Siebel points out mitigation steps if you are on versions prior to 21.12. Uh, 21.12 includes the updated log4j core libraries, so this should be safe. The update path to the latest 21.x, so to 21.12, is not at all different from prior releases. So if you are on a modern Siebel release, 17.0, which is no longer really modern, or anything 18, 19, 20, or 21, you can update to 21.12 following the mandatory steps and implementing, if need be, the optional steps. So let's just take a quick look at the diagram for development environments, where first step you have to take a backup of the environment, the binaries, the machines, and the database take a full backup so you can recover from any failures. Run the MDE on any machine. And if it's a Siebel server machine, if uh, on the first Siebel server machine, it's recommended to let the post install database update run either automatically or manually. So when the post install database update is finished successfully, then you are done unless you decide to run the repository upgrade, maybe to uptake the latest REST API or loyalty features. That would result in an additional task to, of course, test and deliver those changes. There might be configuration instructions in the release notes which you want to follow, which result in additional work in Siebel tools or web tools and needs to be tested and delivered. And depending on the version you're coming from, there might be a list of administrative changes, such as setting up the debug server if you come from 21.10 or earlier, or uh, just plain uh, update of the DISA agent on maybe uh, machines you use for test automation. So the gray boxes indicate additional optional work if necessary. And on an 
our, our environment, such as test or production, of course, you have to start with a complete backup, run the MDE on every machine involved, and on the first Siebel server, run the post install database update. Of course, you have to run only once. And if there are no repository changes as part of the update, then you are done. But if there are repository changes, you use the migration application to migrate these changes and the C data changes from DR to RR. And if there are any administrative changes to make, you have, of course, to implement them before you declare victory and your update is done. The upgrade path on the lower half of your screen from anything IP16 or earlier releases has not changed in with 21.12. So that means if you are on a very, very old release, 7.5, 7.7 or similar, you are running into a two-step upgrade via 8.1.1. You have to migrate high end activity to open UI. If you are on a still very old release, 7.8 up to 8.2.1, uh, you have a full upgrade to run with high end activity to open UI upgrade. And if you're on a higher version, the blue, blue versions here are basically versions where you could have opened UI already. If not, you still have to migrate to it. And that is an incremental repository merge. It's still a proper upgrade project, the duration measured in months or person years. And that will result in your direct upgrade to 21.12 at the time of this recording. And if you are already upgraded to anything higher than or equal to IP 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, you are not doing an upgrade, you're doing an update. And that update, as described just in the previous diagrams, is measured in person days. So that's it for Siebel CRM update 21.12. Indeed, an action-packed release for us just before Christmas. So the Siebel Hub says thank you for watching. Thanks for your contributions to the Siebel CRM community and we wish you a happy holiday season, happy new year. Take care, stay safe and bye-bye.